the D. Thank you for joining us this morning. This is the Christina Benjamin Week Takeover. And before we bring our beautiful guests into the studio this morning, I just want to remind all of our listeners that our show features a wide range of guests that include community leaders, entertainers, authors, business professionals, and entrepreneurs. Our target audience is vast with something for everyone. And we truly enjoy providing a platform to inspire, encourage, and definitely empower people while adding a little bit of laughter and entertainment to your morning. So I hope that you will join us each and every morning. But this morning, this is going to be a heavy show and not heavy in a bad way where you'll need tissue because it's not the kind of show, but it's going to be a show that's going to be enlightening, empowering, and I think motivating to a lot of different people from around the globe. Tonight, so I should say this morning's hot topic is women and alopecia. And we have our expert who is a true expert in this area, Mrs. Christina Benjamin. She's a serial entrepreneur. And if you tapped in yesterday to listen to our show, you got to know her a little bit intimately about who she was, the woman. And this week, we're going to break down some amazing topics that's going to definitely pique your interest. So without any further ado, I'd like to welcome back for day two of the Christina Benjamin Takeover, Christina Benjamin. Hey, everybody. Thank you for having me, Miss T. T. Oh, you're welcome. I am so grateful that you have taken the time out of your busy, busy schedule to bless our platform with your presence and your knowledge. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. My pleasure, always. I'm excited too. So I got it. First of all, I was telling the people, it's a heavy topic what we're going to be diving into this morning. It might be a little bit heavier for others and, and right on point for some. But let's talk about women and alopecia. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about it. <laughs> I am seeing an alarming amount of people, women in particular, coming in with hair loss. And it's for many different reasons. It's not all because y'all put perms in y'all heads and you ripped it out with quick weaves or with ponytails. Um, We do see a lot of forms of traction alopecia, um, which that is normally from pulling at the follicles. Um, but I'm seeing a lot of areata or universal um, totalis uh, er- uh, alopecia. That's where all the hair is gone, or they may only have certain areas. Seeing a lot of female pattern baldness. With that being said, I was coming in and seeing so many people at an alarming rate. Um, and because I was already in a specialty, which was short hair, mm-hmm. I seen it even a need and a niche in the market where they didn't even it was so underserved in the area of people that even just love wearing their hair short they didn't have many options if they had no hair at all or little to none so um I would say that's where kind of like the rebirth of my career kind of happened especially after I left Michigan because I was already doing a lot of um I was doing cranial prosthesis back then. I just didn't know it at the time, but I was already doing a lot of camouflage cutting because even on natural hair, I was seeing um, most of my clientele as far as my age, um, my age demographic would be more like 35 and up. Mm. And I was seeing so many people have hair loss. I'm even now seeing even them coming in younger And so that's really alarming. So some of it is too has a lot to do with nutrition, hereditary um, things. You know, some of it's just genetics. Um, Some of it is, you know, you're just predisposed to thinning. Um, And even if your mom and your dad didn't have it, it could have been a couple of generations back. Um, It's in the foods that we eat. Um, Women, we normally have more of a stressful life than men, Mm. you know, in particular. So we internalize are stressed differently and sometimes you know you may have autoimmune things going on where the body begins to just attack those follicles and so you know it's so many reasons why women have alopecia but alopecia is the absence of hair or you know you um losing hair Um, Mm. it could be the start of it so prevention 
and getting ahead of it is the best thing to do and what I'm seeing is um, there's so many women that wait too late before seeing a doctor and it could be a lot to do with either we don't have time or let's be real sometimes we don't have insurance that's true. so um that's another thing that you know we can go all day with that because you know honestly i feel in america everybody should have access to health insurance um yeah, I agree. but the reason why i'm seeing so much is because it hasn't been taken care of uh so this is where a lot of times they by the time they get to me we're into a cranial prosthesis that's different from a wig wigs are for cosmetic use cranial prosthesis non-surgical hair replacements that's for people that cannot grow back their hair. That's for people that are struggling with hair loss. That's different than a wig. And so around me, or even when I'm teaching, wig is a bad word. In a sense of the approach to it is going to be totally different. We're, we work with hair systems, you know? Mm-hmm. So this is restoring women's confidence in their crowns. Yeah. I was going to say that. You, you hit two points. I know one of my questions I wanted to ask you I know we're talking about women in alopecia, but is it true that it occurs in men and women of all races? Absolutely. Okay. All races. Yeah. All races. Indians, um, I see a lot of Indians. Uh, Asians, yes. You see it in Asians. Mm. White, absolutely. Caucasian, yes. Um, We see it a lot. Everybody, um, men, women, and children. Children coming in that have alopecia, Mm. you know? A lot of times, a telltale sign of you could be starting to deal with alopecia is it starts, um, sometimes it'll start um, even in your eyebrows. You know, you see some people that they just don't have eyebrows. Yeah. Or it's very sparse. Um, a lot of times that's, um, that's also another indication that you could be in the latter part dealing with alopecia down the line. You know, so it's a, it's a lot of different things that cause alopecia, but we don't always just pinpoint it to one thing unless you know for a fact you've been pulling out your hair for years come on now Mm -hmm. um but for most part you know some people are just their hair is just coming out and then let's not talk about having children holy father okay having Mm -hmm. surgeries that anesthesia can also take out your hair also you're seeing a lot of people getting surgery elective surgery is done now nowadays they're getting bariatric surgeries they're getting bbls they're doing tummy tucks all that kind of stuff these things still that medicine has to go somewhere it has to come out of your system and so people don't realize that it can stay in your system for some time that anesthesia and especially with doing any type of bariatric uh, bariatric surgeries where they're rerouting anything you're going to lack some nutrients somewhere it's going to take a moment um and that normally is a side effect that doesn't happen at all but it could happen because we're la- we're lacking some of those vitamins and minerals that we normally would have because um, you're not your food intake is just not there anymore so you know um a lot of times they can reverse it but sometimes their hair may not ever come back to the fullness that it is until you know their body is able to have some type of homeostasis where it begins to balance itself self out you know so um and it, it's it's from individual to individual it's a lot of factors why people have um, alopecia and it can also be environmental you mm-hmm. know your, your your environment the climate you live in so you know it's it's a lot it's a lot sis. so man yeah that you know um it's the, it's very deep because we both know someone who suffers with alopecia and who's a sister to us you know um yes. and I, ne- I never knew that's what she suffered from in the beginning. I-, I just thought she just lost hair bad, you know? And one thing, I think we talked about this before, you have some people that hide it and and people are not aware that they even have this issue going on because they either wear units or they'll get their hair done and you never see them go through the stage of not having it done. Yeah. And so what, what is one of your most memorable client experiences with someone with alopecia? Um, it has to go back to, it's nothing like the first. 
Mm-hmm. My very first memorable one where I was able to like really, I had been seeing it in the clients that I had been dealing with, but it had to be someone that was brave enough to kick it off. And that was Ursula Ace. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, y'all mm-hmm. know her. She's in Detroit. Wonderful psalmist, a wonderful spirit. Um, just someone that's always encouraging someone. You would never know like she had that going on. And I was there with her when she revealed to the world she had alopecia. It was one mm-hmm. of the most freeing moments. It was a very vulnerable moment. It's a moment I won't ever forget. I didn't take it for light because as women, we're told our hair is our glory. You know, if mm-hmm. you don't have your hair, where's your glory? Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, of course, we know that hair is it's just an accessory. Um, and, of course, we know there are other glorious things about us. But when the world is telling you your hair is what makes you glorious, I mean, to come out and show people her flaw Mm. to speak so to speak flaw so to speak and own it and finally accept it it was just an incredible moment and that's where I really had a different I realized like this is ministry this is not just me trying to turn over a profit you know me getting good at it and me making money off of it was a byproduct of it it was going to happen but that was not the main goal and still is not the main goal. Um, but I would say I'm thankful for her seeding that because through that, it showed anyone can have it. We don't, yeah. we are the face of alopecia because we don't know who has it. Mm-hmm. And nowadays through technology and just through um, us being able to spread the word with the internet, now people are finding that they don't have to suffer alone. So we thank her for her sacrifice and her being brave because it really jump started me in diving in deeper of honing into it. And I'm like, I don't want to be just good at this. I want to be great at it. I want to master this. Then what I want to do is I want to teach this because this changed my life. This can change other people's generation. And I I always looked at myself like I want to be a legend in the game. I want to be the person that people say is the standard. Do you yeah. understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And I believe that the Lord is allowing me to carve out my own way. Has it taken time? Absolutely. I'm just chipping the I- iceberg. But I believe when you do something different, you know, that's when change happens, you know. So just trying to be a part of history and changing that and just bringing something different. Because with for me, um, there was there's not many short hairstyles you can find that for, for alopecia. So you know, Ursula was amazing. Like, I just, uh, she allowed me to put a beautiful piece on her. It was a short style. And, like, I've been rocking ever since. So, she's one of my favorite testimonies. Like, for real. Wow. That was life-changing for me. I remember. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. So, I want to know, I, I, I want to confirm something. Because you mentioned um, the word. And I was like, I wanted to elaborate more on it. You said, um, and I don't know if I'm going to say it right, Ariada or Arietta. Yeah. So, Ariada. Okay. So, when I was doing a little bit of research, they said that it, like you said, I think you confirmed that it could mm-hmm. be a genetic link. Mm-hmm. You said also uh, that it could be associated with other autoimmune immune dis- you know, conditions such yes. as vit- vitiligo, asthma, eczema, Down syndrome. Have you ever encountered any of your lupus? And and I'm a lupus warrior. Yeah. Um, sure. And when I think about what you're saying, I noticed that I was just telling Swift not too long ago, I'm losing. I was like, I'm about to hop on a plane and go see Christina because I'm losing hair. Or it's almost like I'm getting an automatic mohawk, right? Mm. So I was like, why? Like, what the freak is happening here? And he said. Before you start freaking out, you should go see Christina. So I was like, I'm gonna have to hop on the flight. And I know you're in and out, you're all over the place. I was like, I know you're not in the salon like that anymore. But I'm like, this one of them, I'm up to pull up at your house. I need right. to come I'm to your house. Up okay. Yeah, I'm up to pull up, up to the crib. Okay, I'm gonna spend the weekend, but I need you to look at this hair. I need you to see what's going on. Because Absolutely. you remember when I got the big chop, I was like, I'm not trusting yeah. nobody to do that big chop but you. And so yeah, it was amazing. But I really feel like something's happening 
And the young lady that does my hair now, she was like, you know, I normally do your quick weave, so I've really never looked at your hair like that. She said, because I always wash it, blow dry, I use the protective styles. She was like, but I never, you know, I can't say, oh, you're losing hair. I said, see, I know I am. It does, they not look like that to you, but I know what my hair normally looks like. So when you started saying these things, I'm like, okay, that could be something that I need to look at. And when your body is giving you signs of that, that's when you need to address it, not after the fact, not a year from now. I would say those are those times where, of course, I can do things aesthetically, but you always, always want to go set up an appointment with your physician, with your uh, dermatologist, because they are the ones that can let you know what's going on in the inside. And then what we do as licensed professionals, we work in conjunction with um, your physician and what their diagnosis is and what their prescription for what they would, you know, what you would need. And so we don't want to be counterproductive. And so my thing would be definitely when you're noticing you're having shedding and thinning, one, we're going to alleviate whatever tension is going on. Sometimes doing repetitive styles, you have to give your scalp a break. Yeah. You know, you have to let your your hair breathe. And that's so important because we don't see enough of it because we go from weave to weave to weave, wig to wig to wig. Mm -hmm. But at some point, you have to address your hair because, you know, you're never seeing it because it's always covered up. And so that's that's another reason why a lot of times people don't realize. But like you said, I know what my hair does. She may not, but I know what my hair does and I know it's thinning. And Mm -hmm. so... That will be your first course of action. And then when you come to someone like me, I'll say, well, this is the type of hair system I'm suggesting while you're going through treatment or to give your hair a break in between some of those other longer preventative styles. You know, some of these preventative styles are taking people's hair out because you still need time to let your scalp breathe. You know, get your mm-hmm. ends clipped, get a deep condition and do a scalp um, facial. You know, it's a lot of things that we have now Um to help with that but the most important thing is that it starts from within and then because you have other factors you have to look at it's not just you you have other things that you deal with you know you're a lupus warrior those things play into also um how those cells react to sending you know healthy blood supply and stuff like that so you know some of it is not just because it's it's just you getting your hair done repetitively like that you know you just have to look at it you have to look at your diet it's a lot you have to look at your stress levels you know stress levels can definitely take it out if you're the type of person everyone everyone has a way of dealing with stress too and it comes out in different forms Mm -hmm. some people break out in hives some people gain weight you know some people sweat a lot some people lose hair you know everyone's different so you know best course of action is always go to your dermatologist first or your physician for sure now i have to ask you so what walk us through the process of a consultation for a a client that has alopecia where where does she or he where how do they start like what does that process look like Well, number one, I would say if you are looking for a hair loss professional, I definitely would check out their website, their look at their IG page. Um, You need to look at their work. You need to see what do they do and what do they do well? Mm -hmm. And have they replicated it several times or does it always look the same? Um, Also, you want to see, do they have a private location? Are you the type of person that is very nervous about going into the salon? I deal with many women that have not been to the salon because they're embarrassed. And the worst thing a stylist can do is put a, a client that is vulnerable and that is, that is, first of all, I don't even know you like that. And for you to put me on blast in front of everyone and show everyone my biggest secret, mm. you've lost my trust already as a client. Mm. And so most stylists don't realize that because they're not in tune with you have to have some empathy going into this and understand that this is a a serious issue you would never go to your doctor's office and address in front of public 
know what I'm saying? You want to do that out in the lobby. lobby. They normally bring you into a room. So I feel proper consultation needs to be private. It doesn't have to have a whole lot of onlookers. It needs to be where if you need to close the shades or put it. I'm so sorry. We got disconnected. Can we pick? Do you remember we were talking about providing a shade or a covering? Yes. Oh, wow. We really got cut off. Yeah, we did. We, we. I know you were going and I'm like, oh my God, did I lose you, Christina? So I was like, no yes. worries. That's okay. okay. That's technology. That's technology. Um. Well, Um. yes. What I was saying was going to a hair loss professional, you want to make sure you, number one, research them, make sure you looked at the, some of their work. Another thing, location is everything. You want to make sure it's in an area that you feel comfortable going. We we'll also want to make sure they are able to offer you some level of privacy. You know, we would never in, undress in front of the world, you know, so um, we, we want to make sure they're not just putting you on the main floor where everyone can see you and your hair loss unless you're at the place where you just don't care most mm-hmm. clients I always I don't care whether you're at that place or not this is a private moment and um, it's important that we establish trust mm-hmm. and so that's why it's important that you understand I understand your privacy is everything yeah. to me mm-hmm. um, so you know you want to find someone that that's important and you know that that even if they don't work in a suite um they have some level in their schedule to carve out time for people that have hair loss or you know where where can you take me in a salon where it's private do you have a partition that when you take off my hair can you um you know put the partition up so I, I don't want people looking at me and stuff like that you know everyone's different another thing is you're going to get with someone that's going to do a light medical history as well as your history with weaves wigs chemicals all that kind of stuff that stuff is very key because that helps us know also what you're used to what to put you in what's too high maintenance for you what's not you know um also knowing if you've had allergies or reactions to things help that's very important because that really does play into the hair um replacement that we're going to put you in um another thing a good stylist is going to also a good well a good hair loss professional she'll have options for you because everyone's hair loss is different you know Mm -hmm. some people could wear them in here some people don't want glue in their hair some people don't want to wear glue um so if they don't want that then you got to be able to offer them something else and so you want to always have um you know a plethora of things for them to choose from then they'll go over maintenance with you what is maintenance care look like? Because this is an investment. You know, hair systems and wigs are totally different. Hair systems are cranial prosthesis. These are for people that cannot regrow their hair. Mm. You know, these are for people that also, or maybe in a stage of where they're trying to work on growing their hair, but they still need help with fullness and stuff like that. Um, you know, wigs are different. They're for cosmetic use. You can go buy your wig off of Amazon. That's, that's not what this is. So, you know, you got to also know the price point is a lot different. So they can range. They can range anywhere from as low as five to up to three to five thousand dollars, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's an investment. So it's ongoing care with it. So this is something that you will look at, look at and see how does that fit into my lifestyle and my life and my budget. Another thing is that with you, the advantage of you going to the dermatologist um, when you come in, some stylists um, that are professionals, they also take insurance. So if you have a diagnosis and you have a prescription for a cranial prosthesis, it's a, and you have insurance that covers that and they're in network or what do they cover for people that are outside of network, you may be able to be entitled to some reimbursement or they may be able to just, depending on if you have VA benefits, there's so much you can do. So, um, and I don't think a lot of people know that they can write some of this stuff off. So, you know, it's a lot, it's it's a, more than one way to in it, cat. But, you know, during a consultation, they normally go through the whole process of that. And then you set up your appointment. So it's not like you just book an appointment and say, I want to get my, I want to get a hair system done. 
uh, next week. Or, no, ma'am. We need to sit down and see, does, is this even work for you? <laughs> and, uh, you know, a proper one is, you know, they're going to take measurements. They're going to take a little pictures of the hair loss. So, you know, they're able to, especially if you're regrowing your hair, so we can see where you started. Because, you know what I'm saying? So Now, when you say regrowing their hair, what does that mean? It really depends. And I'm going to tell y'all this. I don't care how much oil you put in your hair. I don't care what kind of vitamins you take. If those follicles are damaged, if they're sealed off and closed, it's not coming back. Mm. Wow. It's a matter of let's try to preserve what you do have. Okay. People that you see or that are able, they may have came in and that they may even have been clean, but their follicle wasn't dead yet. So that's why their hair is able to regrow. You know, once it's still over and stuff like that, you know, it's not really coming back. That's why I'm not saying that hope is all gone. I'm just saying that, you know, you have to be realistic where you're at. And that's another thing. A good stylist is not going to force something on you. I'm not about to force you to shave your hair or take your hair out. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, to make a hair system fit. If I know you're trying to regrow your hair and you're going through treatment, you're going through your PRP treatment, you're doing steroid shots, I'm not going to put you in something that's stationary, that's glued down. That will be counterproductive. You know, most of these people you see when they come in and you may see me glue it is because that hair is not coming back. And what would it, what would the piece hold on to? It's clean bald. So you got to understand it's flimsy. So it's different when, with long hair units are different from short hair units too. So the application is totally different. So when we're dealing with crown systems, it has to have something to attach to. So if you don't have hair around it to clip in or even sew in, we have to glue it down. And so it just really depends also where that client is in their own realization of their hair loss. So I'm not big on taking people's options away or hope because I believe God could do anything. God could close some oh, a dead file so he could bring them back to life. Absolutely. Right. So who am I to say it won't work? Um, but when we're working in reality, I'm going to put you in something that works for you. If that's what you want to do, I'm going to try my best to oblige what you're trying to do on your own to grow it. Um, mm -hmm. But I have had clients that they have regrown hair because their follicles, um, even though it may not be it may not be super thick, it's coming back. You know, it may yeah. not come to the All state right. that it was. But you know, there's always hope. So you know, it. Who knows? You know, um, my main thing is to make sure we don't further take it out. Now you mentioned a three letter acronym. What is PRP? Okay, so um, let's actually I don't want to give the wrong terminology for it so we can if you can we can pull it up but I can give you a short version it's with your platelets what they do is they draw your blood they put it in that little thing where they sh uh, are able to suck what is that thing called I forgot when I was in lobotomy um, mm -hmm. it's able where it separates the blood and the plasma and everything like that is you putting it back into your scalp so it's like injections um, and so that's been known to grow some people's hair back too. I will tell you, it's a little expensive and you have to do kind of a couple cycles of it, but it has been known to work. So, um, I want to pull up the definition just so we, I pulled it up. It so, okay. um, PRP is platelet rich plasma. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they inject it into your scalp in those areas. Oh, wait, wait a minute, honey. Wait a minute. Mm -mm. Wait a minute. Now, hey, you talking about someone who's no, carrying needles? Just wait a numb. minute. Do you yeah, numb it? I mean, what you what what what, what, what are we doing? I'm sure they do a little bit of numbing, but I I have I mean even steroid shots they're not the most comfortable thing. So I mean, if you can handle yeah, I don't like those steroid. Shots I can't handle it mm -mm. in your scalp. You probably can handle the platelet rich plasma. Um, but again, it's your own platelets and it's, um, something that promotes, um, you know, um, tissue to not tissue, but it helps. I don't know the flow to work right there. Um, under there, I, I don't really, I'm not a dermatologist, but yeah, you know, I've known, uh, I've known uh, a lot of my clients to get it. And, but I will tell you this, mm -hmm. it's half and half. 
What does that mean? Have saw results, have did not. Mm. Because they were already at a place where they were smooth bald. And these dermatologists are not going to always tell you that because it's an expensive service. It's an upsell. They're not going to take your hope away. I mean, they'll try anything. That's what you want to pay for. So, you know, it's good for you to see if it will, but it it could regrow back your hair. It's it's worth a shot. Um, But, um, yeah, uh, most of the times they're at the place. I haven't seen much success with people do it, but I... I am not a dermatologist. But just from what I've seen, I haven't seen. That's not something I feel. I feel like mm, I just, I've seen it happen with people that have had hair transplants. Okay. And with them doing that in conjunction with the PRP, maybe they have grown it back. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. They have, they have thought, they have, they've had transfer over follicles to the front or wherever the hair loss is. So, you know, um, I'm not saying that PRP does not work. I'm just saying everyone's situation is different. So if you want to try it, you definitely can give it a shot. Um, it, you have to go back for a couple times. And then you just let you see if it works. And if it doesn't, then you kind of know, you know, once you get to the end of, you know, doing all that you can do. Now we got to just work with acceptance. Mm-hmm. You're not by yourself. And you know what? Um, there are options for you. And the way this lace and these hair systems are now, it's very undetectable. So if you didn't want anyone to know, you really don't have to have anyone know. So you don't have to suffer in silence. And that's where we come in. So if a patient, or I'm not going to say a patient, a client, I'm sorry. A client comes to you with alopecia. um, How often do they come to see you? Everyone's different, but most of the times they're about maybe on an average about once out the month, two, okay. two times out the month. Depends okay. on how high maintenance you are. I teach my clients how to maintain their hair. Most mm-hmm. of them don't really have the privilege of sitting back in my chair multiple times out the week because I'm only one person. And so I have so many people I have to try to service for new units. So what I try to do is um, send them to students that have trained in my area or in the area where they live because people travel to me from all over the country and world to have mm-hmm. care systems done. So it's rare that I have a revolving client all the time. So, you know, they may be able to get back in for a reinstall, but oftentimes they're coming from different states. So normally I'll get them started with their unit and then I'll place them with someone in the area that maybe I have trained or that you know they kind of feel comfortable about taking it to their style since it's already cut and already customized for them so they really just need someone to maintain it for them so if for the listener that's listening right now that has alopecia and they wanted to get some more information maybe come and I don't know what what would be the proper way of saying book Oh, okay, uh, no problem. What they would do is they can definitely um, visit either my site, site stylesbychristina.com, uh, or what they could do is visit my um, IG page. It's on Christina Benjamin 82 And there is a link in my bio. And they click that link, and it tells you everything you need to know about booking an appointment. Um, you can always email us at suretysalon at gmail.com or... I still kept my uh, Detroit number. Uh, whoop, whoop. It's in Southfield, but you can call 248-986-8761. So you can call or text or leave a voicemail. And I will have one of my assistants get back with you. And yeah, we'll be happy to set up a consultation. If you live out of state, we can do it virtually. So you don't have to feel like you have to fly way down here. But to actually have the service done, I do prefer it to be done in person. It's just best that way. Um, just so we know everything's fit to you and that you just have a really great experience. So would you, do you travel? Like what if someone says, well, you know, I don't fly or I'm not able to get to you, but do you go to your clients? I could if the situation is right. Right. You know, you're going to have to come up off of that uh, money for me. So, I mean, I, I would look at it and say, if I'm not going to fly because whatever my reason is, 
that money that I would have had to use to fly to you and come back, I could give to you to fly to me and you go back. Yeah. I mean, I'm definitely open to it. Very nice. I, I've done it before. I've done okay. it before. Yeah, I know you have a uh you have a uh uh I don't even know a proper way to say this, ladies and gentlemen, so I'm not trying to be funny. But Christina has a clientele list of celebrity status all the way down to the girl next door. Yeah. And yeah. so, um and but what I love about you, and I'm not being biased, ladies and gentlemen is that you give the same quality of service, time, and dedication to each client despite who we know them to be in the world. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, something I love about woman you. woman is my, is my celebrity, to be honest. Like, For sure. You know, those are the people that will hop on a train, plane, automobile, and they're, they, those are the ones that put me on a map. Mm-hmm. My every regular regular type of female um and i appreciate all their hard work and them trusting me and and patronizing me and um also encouraging me because i can't do it without them either i have to have clients to work on so they come near and far it's mm-hmm. amazing when people will get on a plane and travel to you just for you to do their hair that says a lot it does and it's it's not everybody that you can do that for you you and what's crazy is i don't think it's any disrespect you just know people to do certain things if yeah. you're great at something you're great at it there could be imitators but not true duplicators that so works. yeah <laughs> but i'm 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 grateful um before we wrap up what is one piece of advice that you want to give to that woman or that man that boy or that girl that is suffering or dealing with alopecia secretly um wow I mean it's a journey to that I want you to take consolation in knowing number one you're not the only one if you don't believe me go on the internet (laughs) you'll be surprised go do a google search I promise you, you're not the only one. Um, and I want you to know that, you know, we are only prisoners to the things that we allow to have um, a permanent negative effect on us. You know, you'll find that it's just really fear, false evidence appearing real. Yes, it's a flaw, but it's not the end of the world. You still have your life, you have your strength. So focus on what you do have. and You can fix this. This can be fixed, whether you regrow it or whether we cover it up. You know, it doesn't make you. And I know that sounds cliche, but you're going to have to come to some type of realization so you can begin to live your life because the world is waiting for you to show up, but you're hiding. And so you never know the biggest flaw can be the one thing that sets you apart in this world and you really make an impact. So your testimony matters and you'll be surprised what you can overcome um, just stepping out on faith. So that's my main thing. Definitely. That's some really good advice that, to, you know, that the listener could actually be looking for, because I, I believe that a lot of times we tend to hide um, and mask up things that we deal with. Yeah. And so when we find the opportunity that we want to be able to, to live our lives unashamed unapologetically then we want to say you know what I can walk in my truth I can own this this is who I am and so I'm I'm thankful that your hands because I always used to think your hands were growing hands but they're (laughs) they're gifted you know uh, your hands are anointed you know Um, and another thing about sitting in your chair is that there's always a testimony on the other side of when they sit down and when they get out that chair. So it's a whole experience, wow. ladies and gentlemen, boys and Thank girls. You. Yeah, that's just honest. Um, I want the people to know for those that will say, you know what? I felt encouraged today. I felt empowered this morning. I can look at myself differently in the mirror after listening to this episode and say, you know what? Hmm. Let me get myself ready to show up for the world because yes they are waiting for me so I thank you for that on behalf of our listeners 
I'm super excited um, that you take a time out your schedule to uh, do the Christina Benjamin takeover for this week. Yes. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to close out today with that awesome information you just gathered from Christina. Tomorrow, Wednesday morning, we're going to talk about stepping out on faith. What does that look like? This queen and her whole family stepped out <laughs> and did that some part. big things and and it's always easier said than done and she's going to tap into that tomorrow morning so if you want to talk about stepping out on faith and do people really do it you'll have the opportunity to hear it directly from a woman that really did it she didn't just talk about it she actually was about it so join us tomorrow morning for day three of the Christina Benjamin takeover it's your girl TT from the D from the top of the morning show and Mrs. Christina Benjamin one more time for the people listening if they want to reach out to you how can they reach out yes please reach out to me at 248 9 